Have you decided that this is the year you're going to really take some time and get into your sewing practice, but you're a little stressed about where to set it up? I know how you feel. I've been there. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up my small sewing space. Hello, I'm Patty, and welcome to My Handmade Lifestyle. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. On this channel, we're all about makes and bakes. So if you are too, then I invite you to like today's video and definitely subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you see everything. You're going to want to see all of the videos, I promise you. We're all about living that analog life in this crazy digital world. And I'm guessing if you're watching a video on how to set up a sewing space in a small room, you're kind of into the same stuff. So hang out with us here. It's fun and you'll learn some things. Let's jump into the topic at hand, which is now that we've decided we want to sew, we have a few things, how the heck are we gonna set this up? Uh, I will share with you that like most people, I started out using the dining room table. I think that's a really <laughs> common path that we all undertake when we start sewing. And, um, you know, it worked and I uh, had good light out there and I had some space, but the problem was it looked like a mess all the time because I didn't have anywhere to put things away. They were just kind of piled up on the table. Uh, stuff was out all the time. It just, it was not a good long-term plan. It was a good way for me to kind of test the waters and see if I was going to enjoy sewing to see if it was something that I would want to do on a regular basis. And I did and after having uh, kind of lost use of our dining room for about maybe six months or so, I was like, okay, that's enough. I have to figure something else out. And what I wound up doing was uh, switching the bedrooms in my house. And I put myself into the smallest room, um, which has worked out really nice. It's super cozy and I actually like it. Uh, and then I took on this slightly larger room as my multi-purpose room. So this is my office. I keep all of my supplies in here and I've set up my sewing space. And so you might say, well, that's nice. You have an entire room. Yes and no. Uh, the entire room is not dedicated to sewing. I still can relate to being challenged on space because this is a really small house. So the sewing space that I did wind up setting up for myself, it only takes up five feet of wall space. So five feet across. And then the table I have is about, um, maybe if you consider the space off of the wall, about three feet in depth. So if you can find a space somewhere in your home that is gives you about five feet of wall space, and you can have it come out about three feet off the wall, you can have a pretty nice sewing space that you can have as your dedicated space that you leave up all the time. And actually, I find it easier to keep it neat and clean because I have a place to put everything. It's not just sort of piled up on the table all of the time. So um, as we're sitting here, you can see my um, sewing machine is here. And up on the wall behind me, you can see I've got the Skatis pegboard that I got from Ikea. I did a video on how I set that pegboard up and how I installed it. I will link to that for you up in the corner. So the pegboard, I only have one, and it really um, was surprising to me how much of the uh, bits and bobs it corralled for me. So, um, the table I already had. So the table used to be my work table in the garage. I use my garage space as my photo studio. It gets the best light in the house. So uh, that's where I film my overhead tutorials 
and I do all my photos out there. And that's where this table used to be, and I've had this table for, I don't know, 30 years. I mean, a long time. And what happened was, I was getting this feeling that I really want to have a dedicated sewing space and I need a table. What am I going to do? Uh, about that time, one of my neighbors put furniture out for the trash and it was a dining room table and chairs. And I was like, are you just getting rid of this? And he's like, yeah, if you want it, it's yours and I'll help you carry it home. So I said yes. And what I wound up doing was putting that table in to my uh, garage for my photo studio and I brought the uh, little tile table it's got tile on top um, I brought that inside to use in here and it's worked out beautifully so um, that's my basic setup is the table with the sewing machine and normally I keep the cover on the sewing machine but for the video today I took the cover off so you could see it and then um, on this side over here um, that is uh, a crafting cart that I bought through HSN. I love the darn thing, okay? That crafting cart is wonderful. It's an origami craft cart. Uh, I'll link up here to the video where I uh, purchased it and unboxed it. Uh, it was not super inexpensive. Um, but it is surprising how much it holds and it really helped me to corral stuff because the truth of the matter is sewing it it takes a lot of little pieces and you'll wind up having patterns and scraps and all of these just little tiny pieces so you need a place to put those things and you can't just put them in uh, plastic containers and jars and whatever First of all, it's going to look like a mess and, uh, you know, I, I need things to be neat and picked up in order to be <laughs> able to work. I can't handle it when it's a mess. And this little setup really lets me have a lot of things right at my fingertips um, and it, it, it lets me keep things neat and clean. So I work on a project and I always clean it up as best I can. If it's something that's in stages, I have space I can leave it out and then pick it back up. Uh, so let me just kind of change the angle a little bit and I'm going to show you exactly how I've done this table and how I keep everything. And I hope that you will find it helpful. Before I change the setup, I wanna share something with you. Uh, this book is so good. I first found this book in my library and actually it's, I checked it out again because I like it so much. I learned so much about uh, sewing and how to use my machine from this book. Uh, it's called uh, Sewing Machine Magic by Stephanie Lynn Seacom. This book is fabulous. You can look for it in your library. It's also available on Amazon. I have seen it. I like this book enough. I think I'm going to go ahead and buy it. I use my library system a lot, like every month. And in fact, when I'm done filming this video, I'm hopping in the car and I'm going to the library because I have to return a book that uh, I was not allowed to renew because it's on hold. I guess it's like really popular right now. Uh, so I'm running over there this afternoon to return a couple of things. Uh, this sewing machine book is not going back because um, I was reading other stuff and now I want to go back and reread this book. I, it, it is a wealth of knowledge. It's how to use your machine, all about presser feet. I didn't realize how everything, basically everything in sewing, when you're using the machine, it hinges on a couple of things. It hinges on thread tension and using the right presser foot. If you can get those things worked out and, and have those things working for you, your sewing life will improve by like a million percent, honestly. People who are fighting the machine and having trouble with their machine, uh, Typically, it's thread tension. It's just about always thread tension. And it comes from improperly threading the machine. And in this book, I learned the right way to do it. 
I am going to do a video to show you how to thread machines. They're all a little bit different, but they're all kind of the same, if that makes sense. Um, I do have a video on bobbin setup. I have two kinds of bobbins. The machine behind us is my Singer, and it has the bobbin case. I have an older Kenmore, and it uses a drop-in bobbin. So I have both, and I did a video on how to set up both of them. So take a look at that if you're curious. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to change the angle of the camera. I'm going to just show you my little work setup so you can see how I have things. And um, yeah, hopefully that's going to help you. I've moved my chair out of the way and here you can see I've got the table set up and on top of the table I have put my cutting mats. I really like having these uh, self-healing cutting mats because I sew a lot of little bags which is it's kind of like quilting because it's a lot of straight edges and so I use rotary cutters and in having this cutting mat I can make use of rotary cutters. They also make a really nice cutting space for any pattern that you might have. So I have two of them. And what I have done is on the other side, I have used painter's tape as a little hinge and hinged them together so that they stay together. And for my small projects, this is perfect for cutting space. Uh, the mat itself is three feet by two feet. And what I have done is with the hinge I've made it like six feet long so uh, when you go to cut out like pajama pants or um, like full-size pillowcases you would be surprised at how much space it takes and part of the issue is you've got to run your length of fabric um, across kind of a long space to keep it neat while you're cutting so when I want to cut something larger, I still use my dining room table. I just lift that cutting board off of this table. I take it out to the dining room. I lay it out in its full width, and then I've got a nice big cutting space. But for day to day, I use this just like it is. And uh, so you can see how this is set up now. I've kind of got the sewing machine to the back. That's just because it's neater and cleaner. And as I want to work on uh, projects, maybe I'm looking at a pattern or I'm reading or something like that, I have that nice table space to work on. I also really like to do embroidery projects and I will sit here and do embroidery projects as well. I've got that really nice tabletop art light. Uh, that thing is fabulous and that means I can either stitch or sew at night uh, because it gives me the light that I need to really see what I'm doing. So a tabletop uh, light is really a good investment. Uh, so when I'm actually ready to sew, what I'll do is I just come in and I pull the machine up to where I want it to be. I leave it right on top of that. Uh, cutting mat and I just work right on the cutting mat all the time. I I don't know if that's bad practice or not. That's what I do because I'm so limited on space and I wind up just using that uh, cutting mat as my work surface for everything and then when I'm all done I just put the sewing machine back in its corner and put its cover over it and then it's just ready for me the next time I can sit down and take time to sew. It really is um, efficient for me. So there's my machine and then as we come up the wall you can see with that pegboard I've got all my little odds and ends that I wind up using. On the pegboard itself I have all of my cutting implements, my scissors, my rotary cutters, my thread snips, over on the left side, I have my ruler that I like to use. That's hanging right there. All of those little shelves, they hold my pins and uh, bobbins and all of these little odds and ends that you're going to wind up using when you're sewing. I also, uh, I got those little uh, plastic uh, hanging uh, boxes. I don't know what else to call them. I like those and in one I have all of my presser feet and it helps me to keep everything 
organized. The biggest thing that you want to do is to keep similar things together. If you keep similar things together, you can always find what you are looking for when you need it. So all of the presser feet are together, all of the sewing machine needles and the little tools are all together. Uh, the pins are all together, the pins, the measuring tape, all of that kind of stuff is all together in one spot. The scissors are there. And what I find when you're in a small space, it just, it gets to be a tremendous mess in no time. It's like you blink and it's a disaster. <laughs> so uh, I am um, really, uh, what's the word, disciplined about putting things away right away. So as soon as I'm done with something, it goes back where it's supposed to go, back to its home. You want to return it right away and then you can keep things a lot more organized. So you can see that just with that small table, I do have space to have a project kind of off to the left, and then I have the machine where I'm working on it there to the right. Um, in this room, like this is my multi-purpose room, um, I'm gonna swing over and just show you over here. So this is my desk and I'll just come up where you can see. So you can see there's my computer and desk and the chair that I've got there is a chair, it's on wheels and it uh, has a lever that will raise and lower the seat uh, because you know, depending on what kind of project you're doing and what table you're working at, the height of your chair really makes a difference. So uh, what I'm able to do is to take that same chair that I use at my desk, and then I can just um, bring it right over here to the sewing area. And uh, I generally wind up lowering the chair a little bit when I'm working at the sewing table. And uh, that was not an expensive chair, that was a chair from Target. It was like 40 or $50. And, you know, it looks pretty good, it's small, it works well in here. So, um, Definitely consider a chair with low arms that you can raise and lower and use multiple ways. That is a big help. And I am not going to get into the whole rigmarole. Let's move over here. I'm not going to get into the whole rigmarole of how I've got the craft cart sorted out, um, but let me just say this thing holds a heck of a lot of stuff. And you've got two horizontal areas that you can use for putting stuff, and then you've got all of these drawers. Now, I've been using this thing for uh, coming up on two years, and uh, you know I do a lot more than when I first started, uh, so I've ordered some other things to help me, mostly with fabric organization. Um, stash management is really a thing, and um, I don't have tons and tons of fabric, but it does take up a lot of room. So I ordered a couple of new things I'm going to try out from QVC to help me um, better control like where I keep my patterns and some of the fabrics. And when I work on that, I'll share it with you. But you can see, like there's the door to the room and you come in and there's the crafting cart. And the craft cart, I just really, honestly, I don't get anything back on this. Really, there's, this is my own, I bought it with my own money. I use it for myself. It is fabulous. It holds everything and it's small and it's on wheels. So you can roll it around and it just tucks in a corner really nice. It'll tuck into a closet if you have the space in a closet. And it just holds all of your stuff. I, I love it. I am a firm believer in buying the tools that you need to help with a project. I just, I think that's really important. So it is really, it's a lot going on in a very small space. And I really hope that gives you some hope if you're in a small space because it can be a challenge, especially when you're online and you see these people with these like massive, uh, I would call it an atelier, you know, it's, it's so fancy, it's so big, but you have to remember 
These people are professionals who are sponsored by large pattern companies for the most part, large sewing machine companies are sponsoring them. It, th that's a different level for regular people like us, like you and me. Uh, you can still enjoy your practice. You can still get in a lot and have everything tucked in. Let me show you what's going on under the table because there's some stuff there too. Under the table, I have some supplies. I have that rolling cart. That's where I keep the uh, Kenmore. Uh, so if I switch back to using the Kenmore, I'll put the Singer into the bag. And then if I'm using the Singer, the Kenmore will go in the bag. And you can see I've got supplies for making pillows tucked under there. And then over there on to the uh, lower left is the um, the uh, the extended table that goes on the singer. So, uh, you know, I make also use of space underneath of the table because, you know, that's, um, you know, three by three space basically. And you don't want to waste any of your area when you're in a small space. So you can tuck a few things underneath of your table as well. And it doesn't hinder me in any way. Uh, in, as far as having the room to utilize the sewing table. That is the video for today and I sure hope that you found that helpful. I hope it gives you some ideas and gets the wheels turning for things you can do to create a sewing space in your home, whether that's an apartment or a regular house or wherever it is that you live. If you can just carve out a small space in the corner of your living room or in your bedroom or maybe you have a guest room or something or maybe it is your dining room and you can just take part of your dining room or living room and use that as a dedicated sewing space. If you can get a few tools to help you organize and it keeps things neat and clean, uh, having it sitting in your living room or your bedroom is not going to be as troublesome or problematic as if you are like I was doing back in the day when I started in the dining room and the stuff was just everywhere. Uh, you can keep it neat and corralled and when you do that it's more inviting to use. It's always ready for you to use. I think that's a big thing. With sewing I think it's really important that you have it out and ready to go. If every time you want to do something you have to drag everything out, you have to set everything up. It's kind of a drag. And uh, I do find it's a little bit of a hindrance uh, because you're spending all this time getting everything out. And likewise, every time you do it, you have to put everything away all the time. Now there's cleanup, sewing is messy. However, it's not like having to put everything away all the time. And you can do a little bit on a project, just like I showed you in here, I've got that bunny rabbit project sitting there. It's it's hanging out, it's ready for me when I can carve out a little time and space to work on it again. Uh, it looks neat and clean, it's inviting, it calls to me. You want your <laughs> sewing space to call to you uh, because you're gonna use it more. So, okay, I sure hope that inspires you and helps you with your setup. Um, drop a comment below about your sewing space and share with all of us how are you set up and how do you store your <laughs> odds and ends? That's all I have for you in today's video. I sure appreciate you hanging out and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.